Okay, kids, we're back. So let's talk about the Earth's magnetic field, and I'll kind of tackle all that stuff there at once. The Earth has a magnetic field. Darn good thing it does, otherwise you and I would be ow, 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 dead. Because remember, there's one thing you remember from physics. I taught you this. The sun wants you dead. Yes, it does. It's trying to kill you in so many different ways. And the Earth's magnetic field protects us from death. Okay, we're not, I mean, there's, there's ultraviolet radiation which gets through. That's the atmosphere. The atmosphere also protects us from different kinds of radioactive material, uh, radi radiation, different kinds of light. But the Earth's magnetic field protects us from particles, which are not part of the EMS, the electromagnetic spectrum. They're not part of that. Um, these, these particles are called alpha and beta particles, and these things are radioactive. Man, you get hit by those, bah, you get the wicked witch, you just, bah, and melt away right away. And you don't want that bad day for you. So, yeah, so our magnetic field around the Earth, and it goes like this. So if there were, there's not, but if there were a bar magnet, you know, a North and South Pole magnet, like this one, North and South Pole magnet, it would be aligned like this in the Earth. The North Pole is actually in the Southern Hemisphere. That, and what I mean by that is, I'm not talking about where you know, penguins live in Santa Claus, that's geographic. I'm talking magnetic North Pole is in the Southern Hemisphere right now, temporarily. It's gonna switch, yeah. And the South Pole, magnetic pole, is in the Northern Hemisphere. And so if you were to draw field lines out of the North into the South, they would look like this, okay, out of the North into the South. Now this is where Santa Claus lives, up here. Now this is the geographic North Pole. And down here, we have the geographic South Pole. All right, North Pole, South Pole. Santa Claus and penguins. But the magnetic poles are the opposite, out of the North and of the South. Okay, and so North and the, in the Southern Hemisphere. Right now, temporarily, it's gonna switch, it switches. On average, every quarter of a million years, the poles switch. Why do they do that? Nobody really knows exactly why, but they do. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. They haven't switched in over three quarters of a million years. Uh, that's 750,000 years as opposed to 250,000 on the average in the geologic rock record, which has been, you know, you can see this in the geologic rock record. Um, how could, because the, the, the iron uh, in, you know, the mag magma, magma, this liquid uh, rock comes up from mid-oceanic ridge, like in the, in the Atlantic Ocean, there's a mid-oceanic ridge, and that's where it produces and pushes this new rock that comes out, hits the seawater, and freezes. And the freezing process takes place where you have the minerals that are in the magma align themselves with the poles. And the magnetic you know, poles are going to influence the freezing of the magma that's solidifying on the rock. And if you look at the crystal structure, you can determine which way the magnetic field is during the time that they solidified. So that's just a real quick way of kind of letting you know that that's how you know, geologists do that. They determine the direction of the magnetic field by looking at the rock record on the ocean floor, like in the Atlantic Ocean. As you move farther and farther from the Mid-Oceanic Ridge, you have older and older rock. Okay, so long story short. 250,000 years on average, 750,000. So it has been a long time. So the Earth should be experiencing, it's way overdue to experiencing a pole shift. And when that happens, the North magnetic pole will shift to the South magnetic pole and the South magnetic pole to the North magnetic pole. Okay, and then Santa Claus and the North pole magnetic will be aligned once again. Okay, there's like, so it's, it's, Santa Claus is just, he's been a mess for 750,000 years. He's like, where's my North magnetic pole? Okay, it's supposed to be with me, the geographic North Pole, and it's not, and I'm so upset. So Santa Claus can't wait for them to get realigned again. Anyways, I'm babbling. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, uh, a declination, okay? Who's declination? Who's lination? And why would you want to hit him anyways? <laughs> declination, get it? It's funny. Declination. Now, if you have a compass, you know the compass needle always points north. Well, if it's pointing north, it's actually not pointing to where Santa Claus lives. Probably not for you, depending on where you are with the compass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're down here on the earth and you're in this spot, uh, right here, 
and your compass is pointing to the North Pole. Well, not really. It's actually pointing to the magnetic South Pole that's in the Northern Hemisphere at this time. Scratchy, scratchy. Yeah, so it's pointing here. Now, if you happen to be in line with where Santa Claus lives, a geographic North Pole, then yeah, your compass is pointing to where Santa Claus lives. But you have to have them lined up. Like if I'm over here in New Hampshire, like if you take a compass out and point it, you know, it's pointing north in New Hampshire. Like you're over here somewhere in New Hampshire, and your compass is pointing here. Okay, it's pointing right here. It's not pointing to where Santa Claus lives. That's declination. Declination is the angle that the magnetic pole is from the geographic pole. I don't know what that is right now. I mean, when I was a kid, we had to know that when I was in the Boy Scouts. And, you know, we're doing orienteering. We were rowing down the river doing orienteering. <laughs> That's not orienteering, kids. I'm just kidding. Orienteering, we got a compass and a topo map. They stick you in the middle of nowhere and say, find your way home. You can't get away with that today. But back in my day, we had fun. So anyways, so yeah, you would have to know the declination. So you would know how far off of geographic north is your compass actually pointing. And it depends on where you live in the world. If I live in, uh, in New Hampshire, that, that angle right here, this angle, you know, here's Santa Claus and here's the pole. This angle could be, I don't know what it is, eight degrees, nine degrees, I mean, you have to look it up. It changes, mm -hmm. we'll get back to that in a minute. So if I'm living in Seattle, however, here I'm over in Seattle, Washington, then maybe that declination is only a couple of degrees and there somewhere on the earth where if you stand and you have a compass, it would be pointing directly toward the south magnetic pole in the northern hemisphere. Again, it's weird, I know. And line up with Santa Claus, but that would be extremely rare. There's only like one spot on the planet that, that would actually line up. So your declination is how far off you are from geographic north to the magnetic pole that's in the north. Okay, all right, okay, that's declination. Um, now I said it, it changes all the time because the, the, the pole that's in the northern hemisphere is wandering. It doesn't stay put, it, it moves all the time. And when I was a kid, back in my day, you could measure the wandering of the poles. So here's Santa Claus, penguins, and so if we're in New Hampshire, like here, Here, you know, the, the pole's over here somewhere, somewhere in the, like the Yukon Territory. You can go look it up, go do it. Come on, do it, do it now. Do it now, look it up. And it's up there somewhere in like this Northern Canada area. But it moves. When I was a kid, it was moving feet per year. It might move, I don't know, 200 feet every year. Now, today, it's moving miles per year, miles. It wanders, it's wandering very rapidly now. Scientists think that might be a sign that the poles are getting ready to make that adjustment and switch, okay? So the pole keeps changing, which means the declination angle constantly changes. It's a pain. All right, so that's declination. Interesting stuff about the Earth and magnetism. Well, this is interesting, right? It's good stuff, fun, fun. All right, what do we got? Orsted, what did Orsted discover? Orsted was um, a professor at the University of Copenhagen. Copenhagen, I'm pretty sure that's in Italy somewhere. Copenhagen, or maybe South Africa, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, and so he, he was a professor there, and he's the one that discovered by accident that a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. And that magnetic field, uh, it can be either clockwise or counterclockwise around that current carrying wire, depending on your point of view. So that's what he discovered by accident. Um, then we also have the next guy down, Faraday. We all have heard of him before, right? Faraday, Faraday, that's a lot of cotton candy. <laughs> Faraday, <laughs> a lot of it's funny, it, it is, it is funny, come on. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Faraday, yeah. he discovered the exact opposite. Okay, it was like, I don't know, 20 or 30 years later, Faraday discovered the opposite of what Orsted discovered. Remember, Orsted said a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. Faraday, a magnetic field can produce current in a wire. Whoa, that's why you and I have all this wonderful light. Whoa, Faraday's discovery. Uh, so that we have a magnetic field that's being used at a power plant. I, I believe we get our power from Seabrook. And that power plant is using a magnetic field to produce 
this electricity. A yeah, magnetic field can make charges. Da -da 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 -da. Charges actually move, so you can produce current with a magnetic field. And that's what Faraday discovered. Okay, here we go. What is a solenoid? Very simple. A solenoid is a coil of wire. So if you take wire and just coil it, that's solenoid. So to draw it, if I take a wire, you know, here's a wire, and I decide to wrap it. It's solenoid. A solenoid is just a coiled wire. Um, when you're in class this week, some of you will be making, well, you're not going to be you're staying home, but some of you here are going to make um, uh, electromagnets. Yeah, I'll make some electromagnets. Have some fun picking up uh, uh, with, with, with um, what do you call those things you nail into wood? Nails! <laughs> nails! We're taking nails and, and wire and making an electromagnet. Fun. We'll pick up some paper clips in a contest and see how we do with those. So that's a solenoid. It's a wrapped wire. Uh, why does the solenoid increase the strength of a magnetic field? Because each coil uh, of wire uh, will cause, I'm going to show you this. Let me, I can show you this using this tape. So imagine, imagination, that this is a, just a coil of wire, and you have electricity moving through it, which, according to, you know, Earth's discovery, it produces a magnetic field. And so we use our first right-hand rule, okay? I, I, I described it. I'll go over it one more time. But the first right-hand rule is that if you take your right hand, Okay, and repeat after me. Okay, you ready? I. Say I. You have to say your name. Billy. Okay, Billy, whatever. I, Billy. I, Billy. Promise, promise to give, to give. Mr. Gunner, Mr. Gunner. Well, 1% of my paychecks for the rest of my life. 1% of my paychecks for the rest. I'm going to make it 2%, Mr. Gunner, because you deserve it. You're worth it. Thank you, Billy. That's why Billy's my favorite. Okay? Anyway, back to this. First right hand rule. Take that first right hand. Let's say the current is going shoom, across from my, my right to left. It's going this way. And we, we take our thumb and put it in that direction and grab the wire, just grab the wire. And your fingers wrap around in the direction of the induced or, or made magnetic field. Now, if you're looking at it from your point of view, okay, that would be counterclockwise. From my point of view back here, that's clockwise. So that is, now what happens is if we have a coil of wire, let me say that the current's going around this way. I'll put my thumb that way and I'll grab the wire. Now what's happening is my fingers are pointing toward me. You see my fingers are pointing toward me and as I go around the wire my fingers keep pointing toward me and all the time they're pointing toward me and what that is that's a concentrated reinforced magnetic field. So a coil of wire produces a concentrated reinforced magnetic field, a stronger magnetic field if you have a coil of wire as opposed to a straight line. And so if the, if the current's going this way, my fingers are now pointing toward you. And you can see as we go around, the current going around, is my fingers are all clumped together, all pointing toward you. That's a concentrated, strong magnetic field. So a solenoid with multiple loops multiplies the magnetic effect. So if you want a strong magnetic field, you loop wire together make a solenoid, and that concentrates shoom, that magnetic force shoom, down the wires, or down in between the wires. And you can get a very concentrated magnetic field out of multiple loops in a solenoid. Okay, let's see. Uh, magnetic force, these are two magnetic force equations, and we will use those uh, later in the week to solve some problems. Um, so for now, those are just what they are. We'll, we'll get to the problem solving later. And the right-hand rule is just once again, um, with the first right-hand rule is direction of current. Which way, Billy? Ah, uh, my Billy's out there, so Billy says, to my right. To Billy's right is that way. So, okay, so Billy, I'm going to put my thumb in that direction, grab the wire, and then you know, here's my fingers are wrapping around, and this is the direction of the induced magnetic field. Now, of course, if I'm looking back here, I would say that that's clockwise. If I'm looking from your point of view, you say counterclockwise. So it depends on your point of view on what direction that is. Okay, second right-hand rule. Okay, I'm going to try and go through this kind of quick. I did go through it in class, so hopefully you were paying attention. And second right-hand rule is if we have a charged particle, or it could be particles. You could have a wire with many particles moving or a single particle. The second right-hand rule works for both. So let's say that we have a magnetic field, and x is mean away from you. So x is mean away. Magnetic field's going into the board. 
Second right hand rule says, you take your fingers, fingers field, fingers field, F, F, field away, fingers pointing in the direction of the field. And let's say we have a charged particle, or the neutral particle, nuclear part, nuclear, a neutral particle and laugh at a magnetic field, <laughs> and just go right through it. But if you're a charged particle, positive or negative, Billy, uh, what, what kind of particle do you want this to be, positive or negative? Oh, I'm in a good mood, and I'm an optimist, so I want it to be a positive. Okay, Billy, good choice. So let's say Billy says we have a charged particle, a uh, charged particle positive, and it's moving up through the field like so. So the second right-hand rule tells me the direction of the force that's going to be applied to that charged particle as it moves through that magnetic field. Fingers field, point him away from you. Are you doing this? Do it. Do it now. Okay. Now take your thumb and put it in the direction of the moving particle. And that's up, so thumb up. So now what? Well, if it's a charged particle moving through the field, fingers field, particle direction up, the force that the particle feels, if it's positive, it'll feel the, the, out of the direction of the palm. Palm positive, palm positive, P, P, palm positive. So a positive particle will feel a force to the left, to the left, everything in you own in a box to the left. So it'll feel a charge, and the charged particle will feel a force directing it to the left, out of the, my, my palm. All right, now if we keep the same field here, no, let's just change it, let's change it all. We'll make the field this time going to the right. So field to the right. We'll take a charged particle, a negative particle, and have it move down. All right, second right hand rule, here we go, practice. Fingers field, particle direction is down. Wow, whoa, you've gotta be all limber and loose. I hope you loosened up, you gotta stretch. Ugh to do this. So, huh, huh, all right, finger down. Now, if it's a negative particle, so it's not going to be out of the palm, negative knuckles, they both begin with the letter N, negative in knuckles. <laughs> and so this particle would feel a force into the board, away from us into the board. And so this particle would come down here and go, boom, be deflected into the board. If you follow through with this, you'll discover that particles, when they get caught in magnetic fields, will start to circle. And that's really important. AP loves that because it combines two different things at launch. And AP loves that. It combines magnetic forces and circular motion. MOTL, more on that later. For now, I think we've answered these questions. So hopefully you filled out what you didn't get right, got it right. See you in the next one, kids.